Before we uh, see what was the point of all of this, can we get some agreement on number, well, number, on part A here? We've got uh, the divisor of 8 gives you a divot, no, sorry, a quotient of 42 and a remainder of 5. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Looking okay? So that's the result there. And then here we have a quotient of x squared minus 2x minus 4. And then here's our remainder down here, <coughs> negative 6. Happy with that? So one of the ways that you can check, and I know I was really glad a lot of you did this, right? Um, is by taking this division and actually writing it in terms of a multiplication, which is actually kind of the main point for where we're going here. And we can do this for both of them. Jane's already helpfully done this, right? When you've got your original, your dividend, it is the divisor multiplied by the quotient plus the remainder. And you can actually check that out. What is 42 times 8? Uh, 8 lots of 40 is 320. Uh, 8 lots of 2 is 16. So 336 plus 5, does that give us 341? Yes. Thumbs up, it does, right? Um, we haven't quite written it here, so let's do it now. The actual statement including multiplication would be like this. The original thing. What do we got here? Uh, x cubed, take away 4x squared, plus 2. Zero? Oh, right? And there is a 0x there, but I only write 0x to help me do the division. Once I've done that, I don't need to write it anymore. Okay? What I'm saying is it's the divisor, there it is, multiplied by the quotient, which is that thing up the top, x squared minus 2x minus 4. And then you add that remainder on, which in this case is negative, so I'm going to say take away 6. And we can just quickly do a check on this, right? Um, if you expanded this guy, it does look a little bit gross, but it's not impossible. And maybe you want to check this. It's actually always good to know how to check it. So I'm going to multiply everything through by x, which gives me that. Then I'm going to multiply everything through by negative 2, which gives me this. By the way, you might notice I'm writing on two lines in a very deliberate way. And I'll ask you in a second why I've done that. That's a plus, plus 8. Minus 6. And then there's the minus 6. Can anyone tell me why I've written in this weird way, not on one line in a row? Cancel out it's to help me, just like in the long division, right? We sort of arrange things to get the cubes together, the squares together, the single x's together, and then the numbers. And I've done the same thing here. I know there's just a single x cubed, which is what I was hoping for. How many x squared terms do I get out of this? You can see them paired up, right? There they are. Do I get minus 4x squared? Yes. Thumbs up. Um, what happens to the x terms? Cancel. They cancel out, which is exactly what I was hoping for because there are no x terms here. And then 8, take away 6. Thumbs up. 2. Was that me? You? Never mind. Okay. So, this line here, this bottom one, right, is actually the one I'm really focusing on. What I want us to do is to generalize this. And I've been using these language, these terms very deliberately, okay? We start with our original polynomial. What did I call it again? The thing that's being divided? It's called the, the dividend. Okay, so I'm going to call this the dividend function, right? Now, we've been in function notation, we've been, using to call, we've been used to calling things f of x or g of x or whatever of x, and they're just abbreviations, right? But the reason why I'm calling this by its full name is because I can't call it d, because I'm about to have something else that is also starting with the d, so I'm giving the full name, okay? The dividend is equal to, mm, what have we got here? That's the divisor. And it's multiplied by the quotient. The quotient. Uh, I'm going to have to rub off these F's and G's. Like so. And then one more thing I'm going to add on the, the remainder. Now, this is a, um, a funny thing. I actually am not sure if we've dealt with some questions like this yet, but so far, in these kinds of questions here, the simple ones, right? The remainder you might notice is just a number, right? It's just a number. Have we divided by any quadratic factors yet? We have. So we know then, or we might, might be good to remember, that if we divide by more complicated functions, if our divisor, there it is, is like an x squared or something like that, okay? Then your remainder down here might not just be a number. It might have some x's in it. In other words, the remainder itself is also a function. Can you write that in line down for me? It's really important. Okay, this is the what the division transformation gives us. This is the result, right? Uh, it's the same thing that we saw Jermaine right here with the numbers. That relationship, this times this plus this, the remaining bit left over. This is what we can say here. Okay, now 
I'm going to take this and write it in sort of a now in an abbreviated form, okay? Because I don't really want to write all of these long words every single time, okay? Usually that the polynomial we originally start with, because it's a polynomial, it tends to be called P. Now, you can see why I didn't write that the first time, because it's a specific thing. It's the thing that's being divided. It's the dividend. But we will just go with this convention of calling it P for polynomial, okay? We tend to, the most frequent thing we divide by is this kind of linear factor, like this. It's, we call it linear because if we graphed it, it'd be a straight line, right? So it's going to be x take away or add something, right? So I'm going to say x take away a. You might think, why not x plus a? I'm going to come to that in a minute. But for now, I'm going to make this my divisor. It's not always going to look like that, but so frequently, this is the thing, kind of thing we divide by. I'm going to put that out the front. So that's the divisor. Okay. The quotient, thankfully, I have nothing else that starts with Q. So I'm going to call this quotient Q of X. And then lastly, I've got my remainder hanging around. And I'm also going to abbreviate that guy as well as no guesses for, no, no prizes for guessing, R, R of X. Okay. Now, this line here, I didn't want to start with it because it's like, ah, oh, it's just death by algebra. This is what I really mean, but this is a lot more concise to write, okay? Now, why have I bothered to write it in this form? Here's why. Sometimes, and I'm going to get to this, the sometimes, like what sometimes is it? Sometimes I don't want to go through this whole long process. Sometimes I'm not even interested in this answer here. Sometimes all I want to know is what's left over. Sometimes the thing that is of most value to me, the question I'm most interested in answering is, what is this remainder? Okay. Now, if the remainder is the thing we're focusing on, this guy over here, right? then there is actually something in this line which makes it really easy to directly go, like go straight to this remainder without going through any of this division. And as you can see, it's like a very error prone and long process. It's called long division for Pete's sake, right? So if I can avoid this, that would be really nice. Here's the really sneaky thing I'm going to do. If what I want is just this guy, right? then I want to get rid of all of this. See that? That's what I want to get rid of. Now don't forget, these are all functions, right? Functions so I can put values of x into there. What value might be helpful? What value of x could I substitute in that would make this entire thing just disappear? If I put in x equals a, because what would happen, right? As soon as I replace all of these x's with a's, this part here would become a take away a, which is zero, right? So let's actually write this. If I substitute x equals a, if I substitute x equals a, right? Then on this next line, I'm going to replace every x of which I see one, two, three, four. I'm going to replace them all with a's. I get this. P of a equals, okay, let's see here. a take away a, q of a plus r of a, okay. Now, we just said the reason why we randomly chose that number, you can really choose any number you like, but the reason why this is useful is because now this thing here is just going to disappear into thin air. So kind of my summary is P of A is just going to be equal to, after this disappears, just the remainder, just that part on its own. And I'm going to point out as well, if we are dividing by a linear guy like this, right, the remainder is actually always going to be just the number. Like all of the early ones you tried out, you didn't get any x's flying around here, you just got like three or negative six or two, right? So you can see here in one fell swoop, without doing any division, we can go straight to the remainder. Watch, let's test it out, right? What would be the a for this particular question that we just tried out? X. Have a look. I'm dividing my, my divisor looks like x minus a. So my a here is that number two. Do you see that? Let's just give this a go. Let's see what happens with this guy, right? My p of x, this is an example, sorry. In this case over here, is I'm defining it as x cubed take away 4x squared plus two, okay? So I'm gonna try this thing out. I'm gonna say what's p of, in this case my a is two. That's what you just told me. p of two, okay? Let's throw it in. Uh, I'm gonna do my substitution. Say it again. Isn't it x minus 2? Ah, now, the a is just that number that I'm doing x minus, you told me x minus 2. The a is just the 2. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm actually going to substitute in. And you'll see what happens when we give this a go. 
Two cubed, I'm just going to do a substitution step. I'm not going to do any fancy actual evaluation here. That's just replacing all of my x's with twos. You guys can tell me what two cubed is. It's eight. Uh, this is a bit more messy. Yeah, minus four times four, which is minus 16. And then plus two. Eight take away 16 is negative eight plus two. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are adding your eights and your twos. Okay, so, so look, right? What have we got here? We've gone directly to this final thing without ever having to go through all of that long division. If it just so happened that this is the thing I really wanted, then this, I would argue, is a much faster way to go about it than doing the long division. Now, because this thing is all about the remainder, right? That P of A, whatever, gives you the remainder, right? We call this, very original name, the remainder theorem. All we need is the remainder. Right? If what we were searching for was just the remainder, right? And I'm about to show you why this is useful, right? If all we were thinking of was just the remainder, then this is the fastest way to go there. No long division necessary. That's a real relief, okay?